Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I have a big summer book haul. So in this video I'm going to be showing you all of the books that I've acquired in the months of mainly July and August but there are a couple that I also got at the end of June. I have 20 books to talk to you guys about today and as usual I will be splitting these into the sections of where I have acquired them from. So these sections we'll have today are books that I bought new, books that I bought second hand, subscription box books, books I've received from either publishers or authors. I also have an ebook section today which I don't normally have and over the last couple of months I have just had one book gifted to me and also one book that I have borrowed from a friend. So I'm going to head right into this starting off with the gift that I've received and that was actually Crescent City by Sarah J Maas. Now if you know anything about me and my channel then you will know that I have already read this book and that I also already own the Waterstones edition and the Tor edition of this book. However this is very special because this was a belated birthday gift from Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction and it is not just any edition of this book. Ashley has actually made me an exclusive edition just for me. So in the end papers she has written a note about how this is an exclusive edition that nobody else has. I will just show you a close-up of the edges because she has painted all of these and she has also painted on the front cover of the book as well. So thank you so much to Ashley for this absolutely beautiful unique edition of my favourite book of all time. If you guys are unfamiliar with what this book is about it is an adult urban fantasy that follows a half fae woman called Bryce Quinlan. We start off this story with where a man that Bryce's best friend Danica had previously put into prison is just about to be released. We then skip forward two years to present day where Bryce is asked by the Archangel of Present City to investigate a string of murders that they previously thought that they'd solved as they believe she is the best woman for the job as she does have a personal connection to the case. As this is going to be a very dangerous mission, Bryce is assigned a bodyguard in the form of the fallen angel Hunt Athalar and this is a Sarah J Maas book so romance blossoms somewhere in here and it is fabulous. The book that I've borrowed was also from Ashley and that is The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. This is a book that Ashley recently read and loved and when I expressed my interest in reading it she did say that I could borrow it. I do not know too much about this. I'm pretty much picking it up on Ashley's recommendation and I have heard a whole ton of buzz about it but this is the story of a black drag queen. It is told in verse and also mixed media as well I believe and I'm very excited to get to this. I may see if I can squeeze into my September TBR. Moving on to the ebooks, the first one that I bought was A Sacrifice in the Smoke by Jesse Elliott and KJ Sutton. This was the final installment in the Charlie Travesty serial which was a new adult paranormal slash urban fantasy that followed a vampire princess called Charlie Travesty. This story starts out where Charlie is about to go through her awakening which is around a vampire's 23rd birthday. They go to bed and when they wake up their eyes have changed colour and the colour of their eyes denotes the sector of the city that they're going to be living in. However, when Charlie wakes up her eyes are a colour that nobody expected them to be and this kicks off a chain of events that are catastrophic in part. I have already read this, I believe I read it for my 48 hour bookoplathon in July. Really enjoyed the first four parts of the Charlie Travesty series and I'm excited for some more in 2021. The next ebooks I purchased were actually a bundle and that is the entire Live Ship Traders trilogy by Robin Hobb. As some of you guys are probably aware my book club catch up book club is doing a read along of so far the first six books in Robin Hobbs realm of the elderlings which is 15 books in total we will eventually be moving on to the rest of the books but we just started off with the first six the live ship traders is the second trilogy in the realm of the elderlings and I have been collecting the UK trade paperbacks which I think are actually the original editions that were published in the UK and I could not find the first book in the trilogy for a decent price on eBay at this time so I decided that I would just buy the ebook bundle instead because they were on a deal for £3.50. Not sure if they still are but if they are it's totally worth it because this is three like 800 page books. I will be reading the first book in the series The Ship of Magic in September. I don't know too much about this series apart from that it is adult epic fantasy and it follows ships that are actually alive. I think you need at least two generations of a family who have either lived or lived and died on a 
ship and then it comes to life and becomes its own entity. Don't know much about it aside from that. I haven't looked into it too much because I'm committed to reading it anyway. But a lot of you guys have said that I'm going to really love it. And based on what I've read from Robin Hobb so far, I'm pretty convinced that I am going to. The final ebook that I purchased is The Dawn Chorus by Samantha Shannon. This is installment 3.5 in the bone season. It comes in between the song Rising, which was published in, I think it was 2017, and The Mask Falling, which will be published in early February 2021. And it directly follows the events of the song Rising. It is mainly about trauma and recovery and the main character dealing with the events of the song Rising. If you guys don't know what the bone season is, it is an adult dystopian fantasy sci-fi paranormal series. It has a whole ton of genre elements in there but it follows a girl called Paige who is the clairvoyant. It takes place in a futuristic version of London where it is illegal to be a clairvoyant and one day Paige is captured after using her abilities and taken to this place that nobody knows exists and the whole world is blown open as some interesting elements are introduced into the story. While we're talking about ebooks we may as well move into the review copies that I've received from authors and publishers over the summer. The first one of those is Twisted Fates by Jesse Elliott. I don't know too much about this but I did put a tweet out saying that if anybody has any new adult or adult fantasy romance urban fantasy type stuff that they are looking for people to review then I would happily do so and Jesse reached out to me and sent me a copy of Twisted Fate. Jesse Elliott is also of course the co-author of the Charlie Travesty series. I have read some of her work before and I have enjoyed it. This is the first book in I think it's a four book series. I am going to be reading it in September so I will know more about it then. I didn't really look into it too much. I just agreed to review it because I assume that I'm going to enjoy it and I think it is a fey romance series which you guys know I love. I was also very recently approved for an arc of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V. Schwab. The release date on this one is sometime in October. I think it may be October 4th. I have also recently started buddy reading all of V. Schwab's work with Jade from JD Ray Reads so I am very excited to read this one. This book follows a girl called Addie LaRue who makes a bargain in the 1700s to live forever. However as a caveat to that bargain she is cursed that everyone she meets will forget her. However 300 years later she meets a man in a bookstore who actually remembers her name. The final review copy I've received is The Mermaid, The Witch and the Sea by Maggie Takuda Hall. This was kindly sent to me by Walker Books to review for you guys so thank you so much to Walker for sending this my way. The release date on this one is the 3rd of September so I am hoping to get this one into my September TBR as well. From what I've gathered from the synopsis of this one it follows a pirate on this ship called the Dove and the pirate's name is Florian who was born as Flora so we do have discussion of gender identity in here and Florian is drawn to a highborn lady on the ship and together they hatch a plan to free a mermaid. Very interested in this one it has an absolutely beautiful cover it deals with LGBTQ plus themes and I do also believe that it has POC rep in here as well. Okay so funnily enough we are actually adding a surprise book to this book haul because I just briefly checked my emails and I have been approved for an arc on NetGalley of Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. I do have books by Naomi Novik that I haven't read yet but this honestly just sounds too amazing to pass up. I don't know too much about the details of the plot but I know that this is I think it's a young adult fantasy that takes place in a magic school. The cover is absolutely stunning for this and I'm really really excited to read it. So moving on to the books that I've bought new three of them are actually in the same series. I've already read two of them and that is the first two books and the novella in the Bargainer series by Laura Thalassa. So the first book is Rhapsodic, the second one is A Strange Hymn and the novella is The Emperor of Evening Stars. I still have to get the final book in this trilogy but as they are self-published they are a little bit expensive. I think these two were £12 each and this one was eight. So I am only buying the next one when I've read the one that I currently have which is The Emperor of Evening Stars I still need to read. And also fun fact I originally bought this one in ebook. I finished it in like two days and had to own physical copies so I ordered the paperbacks. <laughs> so this is a new adult romance series that follows a girl called Callie who is a siren. Callie has a bracelet that runs most of the way up her arm that has 322 black beads on it and every bead on this bracelet represents a debt that she owes to the bargainer. Now this book is told in two timelines. The past timeline is seven years ago and details how Callie met the bargainer and how she ended up owing him all of these favours and the present timeline is when the bargainer 
Wagner has finally returned after a seven year absence to start reclaiming the debts that Kelly owes him. So as I mentioned, I have already read the first two books in this series. I absolutely love them and I'm dying to continue. The only other thing I purchased new is I saw the volume two by Carl Kershaw and Brendan Fletcher. I went and picked this up from my, not necessarily local, but my closest comic book store. And it also came with this signed art card. So this is the second volume in an adult fantasy comic series that follows a member of the Queen's Guard who is trying to get the Queen to a mythical place called Isola so that the Queen can have a curse broken that has been placed upon her that has turned her into this big blue glowing tiger. I did enjoy volume one of this. I've been waiting for volume two so that I can continue because the only real flaw that I had with volume one is that as it was the introduction to the story, it was mainly about establishing the setting and the world and getting to know the characters a little bit. So nothing really happened, but I'm very intrigued to see where the story goes in this second volume. Now moving on to the books that I picked up secondhand. The first one I'm not going to dwell on too much because it is The Ship of Destiny by Robin Hobb. This is the third book in the Live Ship Traders trilogy. This is the trade paperback edition that I mentioned that I was collecting. I did take a trip to one of my favourite secondhand bookstores over the last couple of months and I managed to pick up the third book in this series. So now I just need to get my hands on the first two. The second one that I have is a review copy of the fandom by Anna Day. This was included in an Illumicrate a couple of years ago. It was my best friend Ryan's. He's already read it and he asked if I wanted it so I thought why not. I don't know too much about this but it is a young adult fantasy. It follows a couple of characters who go to Comic-Con to meet the stars of their favourite movie and find themselves catapulted into the world of the movie. The last book I picked up secondhand I know very little about and that is Malice by John Gwynn. This is the first book in the Faithful and the Fallen series. I think that this is a four book series and there's also a spin-off or companion series that goes along with this as well. I don't tend to look into adult high or epic fantasy series too much because I found that these synopses are very vague because with the size of the books you get into spoilers very quickly but this is a series that has been highly recommended by Pierre Ford. So when I saw the first book second hand I thought I may as well pick it up. Literally the only thing that I know about this is that there is a war between giants and humans. That's that's the extent of my knowledge. And then the final set of books we're going to be talking about today are going to be subscription box books. So the first one of these I have is the Illumicrate exclusive edition of A Dark Shade of Magic by V. Schwab. This was in their recent special edition box for A Darker Shade of Magic. This edition is cloth bound and it has stunning end papers. It is also signed by V. Schwab. I have read the first two books in this series before. It follows a young man called Kel who is an Antari which means that he can travel between dimensions and in this world we have four parallel Londons. Kel is from Red London, Grey London is real world London and I think the Victorian era. Black London has been destroyed and I think White London is on the brink of destruction and the catalyst for the story is that Kel smuggles an item between Londons that he shouldn't have which sets off a whole chain of events. The Illumicrate book for June was The Court of Miracles by Kester Grant in this absolutely stunning rose gold and black edition. On the cover it also has the sigil for the Assassin's Guild. I believe that the standard edition of this book has the Thieves Guild sigil on the front instead. This is a Les Miserables retelling from the perspective of Eponine. The story starts out where Eponine joins the Thieves Guild because her sister has been sold into the House of Flesh which is the prostitution guild by their father. As Eponine hones her skills in the Thieves Guild she does start to put together a plan to make a trade with the master of the House of Flesh for her sister sister and for this reason she starts to get close to Cassette. However, as the time for the trade to go through is drawing near, Eponine does start to have second thoughts. The other three subscription box books I have I don't know as much about because I haven't read them yet. But the first one is Seven Devils by Elizabeth May and Laura Lamb. This is a sci-fi story. I believe that the main characters in here are a galactic princess who has faked her death and joined the resistance and a resistance fighter pilot who isn't a fan of the princess but they do end up working together. I think this is a story about space rebels. I really don't know anything about it. I hadn't heard about it until I received it in the July Illumicrate. But I do like space opera stories with a band of unlikely heroes with a bit of banter. So I think I'm going to enjoy this one. The June Owl Crate book was one that sounds really, really interesting. And that is Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angeles. So this reminds me of a little bit of a mashup of the Night Circus and An Unkindness of Magicians. Now I don't actually like the Night Circus a 
all that much but I do really love An Unkindness of Magicians and this is about a magician's tournament where I think the prize is to be able to perform in a circus but as the stages of the competition get more and more high stakes the bodies of magicians keep piling up until there are only three key players left. Honestly love myself circus stories and providing that this is more like An Unkindness of Magicians in the way the tournament works and less like the night circus where everything is an illusion and I don't know I just I don't like the night circus because of how ambiguous it is so hopefully even though the concept is kind of night circusy hopefully the writing and the way that the tournament and the magic actually works will be more at my alley because if it is I think I'll actually really enjoy this one and the last book I have for this haul is Goddess in the Machine by Laura Beth Johnson this was the old crate book for July it is a young adult sci-fi story and it follows a girl who was put into a cryonic sleep for a trip across the galaxy. I believe she was heading to a colony to settle there and she expected to wake up in around 100 years. However, she has been awoken 1,000 years later and the people who have woken her up are now treating her as if she is a goddess and she has absolutely no idea why. Okay, so those are the, I think, 21 books now that I had to haul for you guys that I've acquired over the last couple of months. Please let me know down in my comments whether you've read any of these and you would recommend them. I do actually have quite a mixed bag here genre wise and also a pretty healthy mix of books that I've actually already read and books that I still have yet to read but let me know which ones I should prioritize if you have read any of these. Aside from that please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna. If you head into my description box you'll find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as a link to my bookish body website and candle website, the Instagram for that and a 10% off discount code. That's it from me today, guys. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you're a go, and nobody knows. With guns sitting under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.